Welcome to Mountain View United Methodist Church. I greet you from Boulder, Colorado. We are so glad that you have chosen to spend time in worship with us. One of the things that we are realizing in this flexible space, in this time of worship, that you can join us at different times throughout the week, and we are glad that you watch us whenever you choose to. I'd like to share a couple of announcements with you. One, if you haven't had a chance yet to return a pledge card to the church, we would invite you to do so. We're getting ready to study 2021 and come up with a working budget. And those cards are really helpful as we see what commitment you each have to the church and how you will support it, how you will embody the best Mountain View. If you've lost your card, feel free to call the church and leave us a message and we'll send you a new one. You can also complete that online. I also want to let you know that coming up is one of the favorites of this church, an outreach ministry, Thanksgiving in the Park, and that will take place next Sunday, November 8th. It's not too late to add your support by sending $20 to the church to buy gloves for our friends and neighbors experiencing homelessness. I hope you will do that. We are having outdoor worship on November 1st and every first Sunday that service will be a shorter communion service and those services are open to everyone. You must wear a mask and bring your own chair. And we know it's going to get chillier and we are going to only offer the service if it's 40 degrees or more at 10 a.m. And it looks like this Sunday it will be doing that. So if you're watching this beforehand, come and join us. This service and the outdoor service aren't the same, so you are welcome to both. Now, get your heart ready. Be ready to stop, to join in worship, to feel God's presence wherever you may be, to come and worship.
infants gurgle choruses about you. Toddlers shout the songs that drown out enemy talk and silence atheist babble. I look up at your macro skies, dark and enormous, your handmade sky jewelry. Moon and stars mounted in their settings. Then I look at my micro self and wonder, why, why do you bother, bother with us? us? Why, why take a, a second, second look our, our way? Yet we've so narrowly missed being gods, bright with Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world, repeated to us your Genesis charge. Made us lords of sheep and cattle, even animals out in the wild. Birds flying and fish swimming, whales singing in the ocean depths. God, God brilliant Lord, Lord your, your name echoes around the earth. Based on the parable of the wheat and the weeds, this text focuses on judgment in the last days. Joys and sorrow grow together only to be separated on Judgment Day. With this hymn, we begin our month-long Thanksgiving series entitled, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come. Come, ye thankful people, come, raise the sun of harvest home, all is Open your spirit to God and have God speak to you in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come to this time and this place to worship you, to thank you, to come and give you that thanks that you ask from us, the thanks that abounds in this time. It may be hard to find to turn to you, but we are to bring you our thanks in all things, everywhere, and in all times. We come offering that thanks, but we may need help. We may need help as you help us to look at the world through your eyes, through your spirit. Shine your light in places that we may not see. Make evident to us those pieces, those places where our hearts can see you at work. And remind us to be your hands and feet Prepare our hearts, prepare our hearts to hear your word, to sing your songs, to worship you. And remind us that we have been given an example in your son, an example that teaches us. And help us to pray the prayer that he taught us with the confidence of those who follow him as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey friends! So last week, Pastor Stephanie and I got to go and visit a few of you at home. We brought special gifts to our third graders. Can you guess what gift they received? I'll give you a few hints. The gift we gave is old. The words inside go way, way back. Some are even older than we can imagine. The gift is very valuable. Wars have been fought, people have been thrown in jail because of this gift, and many people all over the world have celebrated it in all kinds of ways. The gift is full of stories, stories that can teach you, stories that can help you, and stories that can show you how to be your very best self. Most importantly, this gift can guide us and help us feel closer to God. Did you guess what gifts we gave? That's right, Bibles. Every year we give Bibles to our third graders so that they can read and learn all about God's never ending love and all the ways that his love can be a part of our lives. So let's see our friends receiving this special gift, okay? great to see some of you friends. I hope you enjoy reading your new Bibles. Remember, the Bible is a guide, and with God's love leading your way, you can do anything. Friends, can we pray? Hey God, help us to remember that the Bible is from you and that your word can guide us always. We love you, God. Thanks for loving us. Amen. Okay, friends, have a great week.
is a month that maybe you don't feel to be happy, but it is. It is a time of celebrating. Traditionally, churches have celebrated Thanksgiving in November, a harvest time, giving thanks to God for all that God has provided, a time of offering our thanks for the harvest. And we here at Mountain View are going to do the same with this sermon series entitled, Come Ye Thankful People Come based on the old and familiar hymn, the hymn that you heard. Come ye thankful people, come. What does that mean in this COVID year? In a year when restrictions have been increased again, when we can't come together, but can we? Come ye thankful people, come. Join your spirit together so that my spirit and yours reach together to give thanks to God. Invite others to this worship series to say to them, throughout the month of November, we are going to be talking about thanks, about the harvest, about growing, about planting and creating. And would you like to join me? I can send you the link. I would encourage you to do that. Because people want to figure out in this COVID time ways to be thankful, ways to offer up, ways to know that God is there and that we offer our thanks to God. This sermon series came about as we started thinking about those Thanksgiving hymns, ones that we don't sing very often. Come ye thankful people, come. Now thank we all our God. We gather together. And from that came this wonderful idea that we hope you will enjoy being a part of. We'll start this week with planting because we must plant. And then we'll watch as we grow. And then the third week we will harvest. And then on November 22nd, Thanksgiving Sunday, on that Sunday, we will feast together, but separately. Each week we'll watch and grow. Uh, Michael Shore, I want to give him credit and thanks, created this beautiful graphic for you to remind you of the process and the progress throughout the month as we plant, grow, harvest, and feast together. You know, it makes a great invitation time. Invite people, tell them, my church is celebrating, would you like to? Let me send you the link and they can watch worship and you can talk about it. It's another way of connecting in this time and I hope that you will continue to look for ways to connect both to others, to your faith, and to this church. But today I want to talk about planting. Planting is a great time. It's important to get the seed in the ground because until the seed is in the ground, we cannot have a harvest. Until the seed is planted, nothing can happen. Uh, one of my very favorite stories in the Bible is the story, the parable of the sower. Jesus tells parables as stories to help us understand his word, but also to be adaptive in each time, to understand in each time what the story is speaking to us. So let me share with you the parable of the sower. This is the version found in Matthew 13. Many people gathered around Jesus while he was sitting on the beach. They gathered to hear his word, and he said, let me tell you a story. Listen, he said, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. 
and the birds came to eat them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground where there wasn't much soil, and they sprang up quickly because they had no depth. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. And still some other seeds fell on the thorns, and the weeds grew up and choked them. So far, not so good. But think about the sower and scattering of the seed. It just flies where it will. But here's the good part. Other seeds, other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Can you just see that picture? And Jesus was talking to agrarian people, people who know and understand that when you plant, not every seed will be fruitful. Not every seed will offer up the crop that you want to harvest. And this Sunday, as we speak and think about planting, what a beautiful image. What a beautiful image. Now, I just told you that parables apply to each one of us differently. We're to hear the story, and as we hear that story, think about what it means to us. So what's this story about for you? How many of you are already planting your spring seeds to start in your house, and to be able to plant them out? You've got your grow lights polished and you're good to go. Now, some of you do that, and I admire that. I usually have to skip a few steps ahead and buy mine already started. But the seeds, are you thinking about that? Because I'm not really sure that this story is really about that. Parables usually aren't about what they say they're about. They're about something else. What's this parable telling you? Maybe it's not about planting seeds, but planting ideas. That could be. Maybe this story is about where we plant our ideas. Only we should plant our ideas in good places. Or maybe it doesn't matter, just throw them out there and see what happens, knowing that some will survive. Maybe that's how this story speaks to you. How does this story speak to you? Does it? Let's come back to that in a second. You know, we're getting ready to have Thanksgiving in a few weeks, and we're talking about that and planting seeds and wondering what will grow from them. It's always fun, isn't it? Have you done this with children? To take some seed and plant them, grass seed works really well for this, in a Dixie cup, and water them and put them in the soil and put them in a sunny window and watch. Watch the children. Watch their amazement as life springs forth from what was dirt. Watch their amazement. As they get older, they'll understand more and more, but at first, just seeing that, and I'm wondering if this year maybe we should all do that, just to give us some signs of life and growth, some signs of revitalization as we plant seeds. What will make us feel better? There's nothing like those tender green shoots. We have to plant first. Maybe that's what the scripture is telling us, just get out there and plant. Plant the gospel message, because if we don't plant it, it can't grow. We are the planters. In the next few days, we here in the United States are having an election. If you haven't voted yet, take your ballot to a box and drop it off. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but I'm telling you to vote. It's our responsibility as Christian people. John Wesley told us to go and to vote. And not only should we vote, but we should be pleasant. Pleasant about those who we don't agree with. Pleasant about the results, oh my. But vote. And I know that this is a stressful time for many of you as we wait and wonder and watch. But stop and think. And remember that throughout this election process, you all have planted ideas about what you believe, ideas about where, how we can move forward no matter what happens, ideas that you have planted. 
and take great hope in those ideas, no matter what. Do you feel anxious? We all do. But use that anxiety to plant, to continue to create good ideas and spaces and ways of serving. You all have so many of them. Use this time to plant. And as we wait for more results, continue. Continue to ask yourself, what will I do and how will I plant? Even if some fall on thin soil and some ideas fall where the birds will snap them up and some will wither away. But know that many will fall on fertile ground. And use this time in the days and weeks ahead to plant, to continue planting, to plant as a person who follows. Maybe that's what this is about. It's often hard to understand what Jesus is saying in parables, and there's always many scholarly articles helping us understand and know what others think they mean. But the true gift of the parable is, what does it mean to you? What is Jesus speaking to your heart? And almost all parables are just left, left for us to decide, except the ones that Jesus really wants us to know. And guess what? The parable of the sower is one of those parables that Jesus wants us to get. And it's not about any of the things that I just mentioned to you. It's not about us planting seeds. It's not about us trying new ideas. It's not even about the delight a child may find. How do I know that? Because the author of Matthew goes on many verses later to tell us, at verse 18, Jesus says, Hear the parable of the sower. We already heard it. Oh, but there's more. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, there is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with great joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on the good soil, this is the person who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Ah, oh, explained. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the parable is explained to us, and now that we know what it's really about, it still needs to be interpreted for each of you. We talk about this as the living word of God. So my understanding and yours may be different at different times. The living word of God in this parable explained is about us. We're not the sower. I wanted to be the sower. That sounds like a good job, doesn't it? We're not the seed. I wanted my ideas to be seeds, but we're not that either. We are, are you ready for this church? We are the dirt, just the dirt. Uh, nothing exciting, nothing glamorous. We are the dirt. Anyone who hears and does not understand. Well, maybe we're not actually dirt, but our hearts, our spirit, Jesus is comparing to dirt. But dirt is not a bad thing. We think sometimes it is, but dirt is not bad, is it? We need dirt. But Jesus is saying that we must prepare our hearts to receive the word of God, just like a farmer, just like a gardener, prepares the soil to receive the seed. 
on this day of planting, we have to remember we start there with preparing the soil. So if our heart or our spirit is the soil, how is it with yours this day? Not only did Wesley tell us to vote, Wesley asked all the time, how is it with your soul? How is it with your soul, church? Is it ready? Is it ready to receive the word of the kingdom of God? That sounds so much harder, especially in these difficult times. It sounds so much harder. Is your soil, is your heart prepared? And Jesus tells us ways that people don't prepare. I like the ideas here that if you don't understand it, it's snatched away. The word of God, do you understand it? Or do you just say, I don't get it, and move on and let it be taken away from you? Are you one of those people who, when you hear something, you go, yes, I believe that, that is great, without giving time to stop, to think, to understand, to process it, to pray about it, to ask the Spirit to guide your understanding? Because what this parable tells us is then you have no root to just accept. So when things come that are difficult, you'll wither and die. And then the thorns. When you hear the word of God, if you are choked by the world, you also will wither and die. Well, the ideas, the feelings, the thoughts, the word of God will go. So you have to have your heart ready prepared for the word of God so that you can understand God's kingdom. The hard part about this parable, now that we know it's about preparing to receive God's word, is it doesn't tell us how to do that. Now, we know how to prepare soil to grow, or some of us do. We measure the pH even. We decide what we need to add for nutrients. We understand that we have to move the weeds out, the rocks are bad. We prepare a beautiful plot of land to plant on. How do you prepare that same beautiful plot in your heart? How do you prepare that which Jesus is telling us about? Well, at first, you have to want to. You have to want to do that. You have to want to be active and involved in preparing. One of the main ways we do that is by prayer. But prayer, remember, isn't just praying a wish list. Prayer is opening ourselves to receiving a word from God, asking God to prepare to hear that word, not closed off, but open. Study is another way. Have you been engaged in the study during this COVID time? Have you picked up your Bible? There's all kinds of guides to Bible study online. If you need ideas, let me know. Do you have a devotion book you're reading? Are you getting together with others via Zoom or outdoors or other safe ways to talk about books, to talk about the Bible, to share and learn together, to learn about issues in our world? Have you been taking care of tending the soil that is your heart? Another way that we take care of the soil that is our heart to prepare is rest. One of the things we often read in the biblical story is Jesus went away from them to rest. It's hard. We talk about fatigue a lot in this era. We have corona fatigue. Some of us have election fatigue. We have Zoom fatigue. Fatigue is there. And there's only one way to get rid of it. And that's by rest. Do you find time to slow down, to rest, to do those things that give you a moment to breathe? Breathing is another one. Many of us find ways to prepare the soil by serving. Have you found ways to serve? There's all kinds of ways the church is offering. What are you doing these days to prepare your heart? Uh, one of my favorite things that's happened in the co course of the COVID time, and you see a fruit of it here on this beautiful tapestry. This quilt was made of remnants from face masks. 
I've lost count of the number, but this church has made thousands of face masks that have been donated to first responders, people who have no other way of getting them. All kinds of people have received face masks made by people from this church. And here's remnants reminding us, reminding us of the beauty even there. And the people who did this, it was an act of love. And those acts of love prepare us prepare the soil to receive the word of God. So if you've prepared that, if you've prepared the soil of your heart to receive the word of God, what are you hearing? And maybe we'll focus on that a little more next week when we talk about growing. But listening, Jesus said that we will understand the kingdom the story of the kingdom, which is at hand, here and now, for us to help bring about. Planting, it's not about us in this story. It's about hearing the word of God and preparing. I hope that you will find ways to prepare, to seek out others, to listen, and to find the word of God alive in your heart. As we move through this month of November, remember the planting. Remember that it is us in whom the word of God is planted, to nurture, to grow, to harvest, and to feast upon with others. I wish you all a wonderful November, a chance to gather, albeit remotely, chance to come remotely, but to thank God for all that has grown in you from the word of God planted in your heart. Amen. In 1864, William Howell wrote, Majestic in language and emotionally powerful, the hymn gloriously unites the church militant and the church triumphant in a paean of endless praise. The tune by Rafe von Williams is considered to be one of the finest hymn tunes of the 20th century, and it supports the meaning of the text and causes it to soar. place, preparing the soil of your heart to receive the word of God. Go in peace. Amen.